Hello, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week at everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news of a surprisingly healthy rise in US payrolls. But first, a key index of American business spending, and especially for investment, has come in at its lowest in two years. And the impact on the trade war on the two main participants is becoming clearer. Chinese exports to the US of goods that were slapped with tariffs dropped by a total of $18 billion in the year to June. This was equivalent to 3% of China's annual shipments to the US. America suffered a heavier blow with the tariff hit exports to China falling by $23 billion. This drop was equivalent to about 15% of all American exports to China. And China is getting clearer its goodwill gesture to buy more U.S. farm products is conditional on being treated properly. In its own turnabout, China's investment in projects outside the country are drying up quickly. The Westland Yili deal is an anomaly. Only $35 billion had been committed in the first half of 2019, the lowest since 2013. That represents a 75% drop from the peak of such M&A activity in the first half of 2016. And China is increasingly worried about the rise and rise of the iron ore price. And their peak steel trade group has now called for authorities to step in to control the market price, calling for relevant government departments to crack down on monopolistic and intentionally unreasonable pricing. The call saw iron ore prices fall nearly 4% on Friday. In Japan, officials are turning optimistic about the economic prospects after industrial production data turned higher. Now their business conditions index is reflecting that. The prospect of a recession is fading in Japan and economic growth becomes the new reality again. In the US, non-farm payrolls rose much more than expected in June, up 224,000 and smoothing out the very low May result. But that May result was actually revised even lower. April was too. The average for the two months isn't flash, the average for the past three months is well below par as well. Average hourly earnings in the US were up 3.1% over the past year. US Federal Reserve next reviews its policy rate on August the 1st. Given that US economic growth in the second quarter seems to be running at only 1.3%, the chances of a rate cut, while they may have receded, are not zero. Still with their mandate to both foster employment and price stability, with the US jobless rate now at 3.7% and inflation at 1.8%, it will be hard to make a case that some emergency policy shift is required. It's complicated. In Canada, it might be even more complicated. Their inflation is running at 2.4%, but their jobs data for June was particularly weak, with the jobs shrinking and the unemployment rate rising. In Germany, things are clearer, even if they're not good. Factory orders took an unexpectedly large dip in May, down almost 9%, and that is much more than the 5% fall in the previous month. For a very large economy, shifts as large as these have global implications. US Treasury 10-year yield is now at 2.04%, a nine basis points jump on the US payroll as a result. Gold is down to $1,398 an ounce and a fall of $16 in the Friday session. India has raised its import tax on gold. US oil prices are a little changed. They're now at $57.50 a barrel, and the Brent benchmark is also a little changed at $64.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar is down 100 basis points in the last week against the US dollar, half of that coming on Friday night as the US dollar strengthened. It is now at 66.2 US cents, and the cross rates were also lower again in the week at 94.9 Australian cents, against the euro were unchanged at 59 euro cents. That all pushes the trade weighted index down to just on 71.1. I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.